Collingwood's belief in themselves isn't something that's very tangible. It's, you know, you can see it. It's very um, system-based. It's very focus-based. It's very uh, end result-based because you can see it in the games that we've won, the games that we've lost from being close games or come from behind wins. Um, but it's not tangible. So how how do we how do we get it? How did we come back from a 54-point deficit against North Melbourne? How do we win all of these close games? Let's have a little bit of a look into it. So this starts the series of Collingwood's bye week, a couple of uh, more in-depth sort of videos, if, if you will, um, as opposed to you know the normal previews and reviews and, and stuff like that. Uh, we'll be going live uh, probably this week or, or, or next week um, to talk about the season or the mid-season so far. Have you guys on? That would be really, really fun. Uh, remember, subscribe, like, uh, hit that notification bell, all appreciated. But now, let's talk about Collingwood's close wins, specifically this North Melbourne game, and how the hell do we get here? So I remember back when Craig McRae was appointed, he talked about, in his presser, he talked about bringing fans along the ride with them, um, you know, because we were affected by COVID and all this sort of stuff. And I remember in one of his interviews straight away with Andy, Andy Myron and, and um, Andrew Gaze on SEN, he said that I want fans to be excited with the way that we play. I want, you know, the team, doesn't matter if we're 10 goals up or if we're 10 goals down, I want to see us keep fighting. And I think that philosophy, and that was before I think we even kicked a ball, right? I think that is was the start of this huge snowball effect of belief, the psychology in belief, and how we are the way that we are right now. These 27 games as coach for the Pies, 21 of those have been single-figure winning margins. Four of them have been losses, and two of them have been draws, and those obviously two draws were this year. And it all started in 2022, and it all culminated in that last game against Carlton, where we were behind, Jamie Elliott obviously kicks that goal, and we go on to win. And it was, not only was that a phenomenal game, it was a game where we thought to ourselves, far out, we actually might be onto something here. And the notion that all of this is a fluke or all of this is luck is definitely out the window now. After that game, the Carlton game, Craig McRae said, this is a unique thing. The history of the game says that no one has won as many close games as what we've been able to do this year. It's been quite remarkable. And remarkable it is. Like, when you look at the games that we won close uh, in 2022, Collingwood North Melbourne, we came from um, behind and we won that game. Uh, against Hawthorne, that was a like a four or five point win. We came from behind, we won that game. Uh, Collingwood... Uh, Port Adelaide, it was six points. You know, we win that game. Um, you know, you just got to keep with Gold Coast as well. And, and and all these games, Adelaide, you know, we've had a couple of really close wins against Adelaide. And it wasn't even just in 2022. It moves into 2023. And you just look at our three finals. We win by a total of, what is it, 12 points or something in three finals. And we win a premiership. And then you look at this year and you go, oh, surely their, you know, opposition supporters are saying, surely their luck has to run out. But... When you look at it, yes, we lost our first 0-3, and three, but then we take on the Hawks at, at Gather Round. We win by five points. We obviously get that draw against the Bombers. Take on the Blues again. We win by a straight kick. Take on the Crows at the MCG. We win by four points. The Dockers at um, Optus Stadium is a draw, obviously. And then the biggest one is the Kangaroos. Now, the thing about all of these close wins is most of them, I don't have the statistics here, but most of them have been come from behind wins where, you know, the Kangaroos, Hawthorne a couple of years ago were up at three-quarter time. Um, we hit them hard. We come back. You just have to look at that Essendon game with Jamie's kick after the siren where we were down by heaps. You know, there's an Anzac Day. We were down by 36 points. That was last year. We come back. You know, Nick Dacos kicks those two goals in the last quarter. And yes, you know, we have the personnel sort of to do this. But I remember as well, someone coming out, I think it was Scott Pernery coming out and saying, I think it was after the Kangaroos game, that one of his... Um, one of the opponents or something said something like, you know, we're scared now. Like this is, we know you guys are going to come back or, or something along those effects. I don't know the exact sort of quote, but for a long time, and I think that's waned off a little bit this year, we had this mentality that if we were down at three quarter time, 
there was a very high chance that we were going to fight to the end and win and run over the top of you. And that's what we've been able to do. And, um, you know, it's not even just that, that we, if we're down, we'll win. Even if we're up by a little bit, Collingwood has this aura about them where they know how to close off games, right? You just look at the... Um, the game against Adelaide, even the game against Hawthorne this year where we didn't kick a goal in the last quarter. I think we kicked one point or something, but we were able to stop the ball from, from going around. We, we we stopped any sort of ball movement. You look in the finals last year, especially against Melbourne, where or especially against GWS, where we just shut the ball down. We know how to jump on the ball. We know how to hold that ball up, keep the clock ticking over um, and, and eat down the minutes, you know, bite down the minutes. And I think... You know, obviously it comes a lot to coaching and, and what Craig McRae and, and the team has been able to do, but a lot of it is self-belief. You know, you win the first couple of close games, you go, oh, this is cool, you know, we can sort of do that. Then they start adding up and you go, hang on a second, now that's 12 close games that we won. That's 15. We're on to 21 close games that we've won now and that's culminated in this huge, I don't want to say upset because we should have been ahead at... Um, at half time, but it was, I guess, kind of an upset against uh, North Melbourne on the weekend. Now, when you think about that North Melbourne game on the weekend, we were down by 54 points right at the start of the third quarter. It's the third biggest comeback of this century. It's our second biggest halftime deficit comeback um, ever in the history of, of Collingwood. Um, and when you think about that, think about sl the sliding doors effect, right? We come out, we lose that game, Mel, uh, uh, Kangaroos put a couple more goals on, we lose by 65 points or something, right? And people go, okay, there goes their credentials uh, for premiership success, there goes the top four. Um, Collingwood start thinking, hang on a second, how are we not beating North Melbourne here? We've lost by, by 65 points to, to North Melbourne where we should have absolutely smashed them. What is going on? And now the sliding doors effect of... We come back from 54 points down. It's a 55-point turnaround. We win by one lonesome point, which is our shortest margin, um, our shortest winning margin this season. We win by one lonesome point, and then your belief starts to turn. And you go, hang on a second. How are we down by 54 points and we go on and win? Imagine what that can mean for the rest of the season. We know we can win out the close games. We know that we have a system in place where we can um, kill the ball for 10, 15 minutes if we have to. We know that if we're down at three-quarter time, we'll keep coming. Now we've got this other chamber in our, in our magpie gun, if you will, uh, or another bullet in our chamber in our magpie gun, if you will, that says... If we are down at half time by nine goals, eight goals, there's a chance that we can get you. And I think that puts fear into other teams. And yes, it was um, 54 points against North Melbourne. But that's, if you say, oh, it's only North Melbourne, it kind of discredits what they did at uh, in the first half. Well, that was their best first half in like 11 years or something. They played incredibly out of their skin and they played incredible. You know, I like to think that Craig's original philosophy of it doesn't matter if we're 10 goals up, it doesn't matter if we're 10 goals down, we are going to keep fighting and it could be against North Melbourne, it could be against the Sydney Swans, but there is a lot of fight and talking about the Sydney Swans, you just look at that prelim where we lost by a point, they were up for the majority of the game, we kept fighting and we just missed out on a grand final berth by a point. I think the belief that this team has and and, you know, Braden Maynard said it as well in his post-match interview. He was talking about the belief that they have in not only themselves, but each other. You know, we're playing a team sport. This is not golf or anything like that. These guys rely on each other. And yes, the system in place is, is amazing. Yes, the belief is incredible. But it's these role players that are stepping up. And, and we've seen it this year, six debutants. Um, it's been a crazy whirlwind injury list. It's been a crazy whirlwind season, you know. Um, and I think... One thing that I love, and, and this is a lot to do with belief as well, is when the fans start believing. And, and I'll be the first to admit, at halftime, I thought, I said, this is pathetic. I thought, that's it, we were going to lose. But because I had never seen a halftime deficit like that where we've come back from. Now I know that if that's happening again at halftime, I know that, hang on a second, we're not done here. We're not shot. We can go on and possibly win this. I have that belief in me now. And you as Collingwood supporters have that belief in you now as well. We were 31 points down. The Collingwood chant starts reverberating around um, around Marvel Stadium. 
that's the 19th man that the that Craig McRae and all the fans, uh, sorry, and all the players are talking about. That goes back into the team. They said they can believe in us. Why can't we believe in us and keep going? And then, you know, we put on 40 points in that last quarter um, against North Melbourne. Incredible. And I don't care that it's only North Melbourne. A 55-point turnaround against anyone is absolutely insane. And I, I want to harness this belief that Collingwood had in themselves just for my personal life. Like, I want to, you know, this motivates me to get up in the morning and go to the gym or go for a run earlier than I want to. Like, I start work at, at 9 o'clock. I have to catch a train by 7. I want to start trying to get up at 5 o'clock and, um, you know, go to the gym and go for a run. Like, what's, stop, what's stopping me besides my own mentality? And that's, you know, personal life and, and sport life. It's all, you know, 70% of it's played above your head. Yes, you've got to be big. Yes, you've got to be strong. Yes, you've got to be able to kick a ball, uh, you know, go back for a mark and stuff like that. But it, it's, all, it's all in your head. The kangaroos... When they were when they were done, when they were fifty four points up, they probably thought this is it. Like we're we're good here. We haven't seen the Macboys come back. They believed that they were done, and then when they were losing, they didn't believe that they could come back. In my opinion, and we believed that if we could just start chipping away slowly, we can go and we can smash them. And, and look at that, we, we win by a point. So I think belief is such a strong, a strong, strong, strong point and a, a strong thing to have as. Um, in a team, and I don't think there's anyone that does it better than than we do, really. Like, in, in the competition, I don't think there is any team that does it better than Collingwood, and it's ours. It's our little thing. It's it's the Collingwood belief system. It's, it's our little thing, and I absolutely love it. And I dare say, you know, looking at the rest of the games that we've got coming up, there's going to be a lot of close games. There's going to be a lot of close games, and as long as that belief doesn't wane, uh, the boys believe in each other. They believe that they can go on and, and win back to back premiership flags. It's not going to be, it's not going to be easy, but they believe they can do it. And we need to harness that as much as they harness it from each other. And we need to start believing. And I think, I think it's going to be an interesting end to the season. We get a couple of players back, so that helps with belief. When you start getting these premiership players back, the kids have have done their job well, uh, and it's been incredible to watch. But now we get Pendles back, we get Dugowie back, we get Bernie Majacek back. And it's going to be very, very interesting. And if we know that we can come back from a half-time deficit and a 54-point deficit, what else can we do? And, and I love that question. What else is Collingwood capable of with six to seven premiership players out coming back from 54 points down? What else are we capable of? Because I am so excited to see it. Anyway, guys, this has just been a ramble about the belief that we have uh, in our in each other and, and in this team itself. Let me know your thoughts down below. Belief and all that sort of jazz, manifestation, all that sort of jazz. Leave me know, let me uh, know in the comments below. But until then, like, comment, subscribe, tell your family, tell your friends, tell your pets. And until next time, double shakers. I'll sweep you later.